ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وضرب الله مثلا للذين امنوا امراه فرعون اذ قالت رب ابن لي عندك بيتا في الجنه ونجني من فرعون وعمله ونجني من القوم الظالمين وقال النبي صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم كمل من الرجال كثير ولم يكمل من النساء الا اربعه او كما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام respected mothers and sisters indeed every one of us without exception is the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be it the male or the female the believer or the disbeliever the religious or the irreligious the obedient or the disobedient in fact the atheist the agnostic those who deny the existence of allah they too are the creation of allah as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says al khalq iyalullah wa ahabbu al khalq ila allah man ahsana ila iyalihi that the entire creation are the dependence of allah however what i want to single out and focus on in our short and our brief time today with you sisters is that being the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala per se is not a virtue and a privilege simply because even the devil is the creation of allah taala even firaun is the creation of allah taala but rather what we need to ascertain and become is the beloved creation of allah taala many of our sisters are mothers here many of our brothers are fathers and we have children at times we make reference to one child by saying that's my child that's my 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 daughter that's my son when when saying that's my daughter you not for a moment suggesting that you're not the mother of the other children nor is your husband suggesting that he is not the biological father of the other children but my son or my daughter in essence my beloved son my beloved daughter likewise allah rabbul izzat is the sole creator of every person nay every creature if not every atom khaliqu kulli shay allah says the creator of every atom but allah refers to certain people as his beloved servants as his choices servants as his close servants inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan ان عبادي ليس لك عليهم سلطان وكفى بربك وكيلا now what we need to discuss in this short time of ours who are the beloved female servants of allah taala and how did they become the beloved servants of allah allah makes special passionate reference to his beloved servants wa qul li ibadi alladhina amanu yuqimu as-salata wa yunfiqu mimma razaqnahum sirran wa alaniya and say to my close servants of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that they establish salah and they discharge zakah what are the privileges of the beloved servants of allah the prophet the, the, the quran allah makes mention in surah maryam inna alladhina amanu wa amilu as-salihati sayaj'alu lahum ar-rahman wudda verily those who perform righteous deeds coupled with deep rooted faith allah promises to instill and preserve their love in the hearts of the pious throughout the times and the ages So one is a woman might come and take the cover of a front magazine and maybe be a celebrity maybe be an actress and impress people for a period of time as the theme goes about she's a career woman she has children she's doing well with the times but yeah Allah promises that if you my sister and if I or my brother anyone for that matter will bring about iman and righteous deeds then Allah promises to instill and 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 create and preserve your love uh, in the hearts of the pious till the day of qiyamah the hadith of muslim sharif in allah idha ahabba abdan when allah loves the servant nada jibril allah calls jibril and allah says oh jibril i love this female servant of mine wa dhakirin allah kathiran wa dhakirat a'adda allah lahum maghfiratan wa ajran azima those males and females who remember allah they are beloved to allah so allah tells jibril that i love this servant jibril allah commands him now you also love this male or female whoever it is fayuhibbuhu jibril then jibril loves the servant thumma yunadi fi ahli as-sama then allah commands jibril to announce to the dwellers and the occupants of the skies what is the announcement in allah ahabba fulanan fa ahibbuhu allah has expressed his passionate love and bond with this particular servant in this country living on this particular location and allah commands every angel to love him or her 
all the malaika, all the angels, they love that person. Then Allah pours the love and the acceptance of that person in the hearts of the pious till the day of Qiyamah. So this is the fruits and this is the results if we become the beloved servants of Allah Ta'ala. Now, the question as I said is, how do we become the beloved servants of Allah the first thing? And who were the beloved servants of Allah? I want to speak about few women, few women. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Kamula minar rijali kathir. Many men reached completion and perfection and piety. But I'm afraid from amongst the women, there's been a handful. There's been a handful. And the Prophet Sallallahu has singled out. Throughout, throughout the times and the ages, there have been various women that have been praised in Islam. But by and large, when we, when we make a critical analysis of the ahadith, then we find that there are five women that stand out. Five women in particular that stand out. And the Prophet ﷺ and the Quran has praised them. The first is we make reference to in the ayat karima that I've recited, that is the wife of Fir'aun, Asiya alayhi salam. Allah gives the parable and provides the similitude and the example of the, the obedient wife of the evil Pharaoh. And then thereafter, immediately thereafter, Allah speaks about the Virgin Mary. The mother of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. These were two women. Then, then from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa we learn about two of his honorable consorts. Namely, Khadija radiallahu anha, Aisha radiallahu anha, and his beloved daughter Fatima radiallahu anha. So, in essence, we are looking at five women who are undoubtedly the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and respectively, they enjoyed certain privileges. And as I mentioned in my opening comments, the privilege is that we become the beloved servants of Allah. We are the creation of Allah and we are His servants. Allah has referred to even the disbelievers as His servants. As Allah makes mention in Surah Bani Israel, that when Allah spoke to Bani Israel about the wrong that they were going to cause on this earth, then Allah had forewarned them, فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ أُولَاهُمَا بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ عِبَادًا لَنَا أُلِي بَأْسٍ شَدِيدٍ that when you will rebel and transgress, then as a penalty, I will impose upon you certain tyrant kings and rulers and monarchs. Uh, although they were not the beloved servants of Allah, but Allah referred to them as ibad al-lana. And the ease from the grammar, we can understand that the reference here has been made differently compared to that when Allah makes reference to his beloved servants. So Allah did not say ibadana, but Allah said ibad al-lana. Those who understand Arabic can appreciate it. Nonetheless, what I'm saying is we are the servants of Allah. The discussion is how we become his beloved servants. When we look at the life of the wife of Fir'aun, we are talking of in present day terminology, a first lady, a first lady, the consort of the king, her royal highness, a woman who enjoyed comfort of every type, privilege of every nature, uh, you name it and she had it. She lived in the palace. Uh, Pharaoh had a beautiful view at, at the river Nile and he had the rivers flowing beneath his house. He had everything of the best nature and he spoke about it also. And hence it was because of this perpetual affluence that he claimed divinity. Uh, one great scholar has written that perhaps if, if Pharaoh went through some difficulty in his life, he would have never claimed being Allah. So his wife being the first lady enjoying such privileges, such comf comforts, uh, yet, yet when the magicians came and uh, challenged Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam, and it became a turning point for many people, at that time the wife of Pharaoh, Asiya alayhi salam, she was also observing this here. So it was just not between Musa and the magicians, it was just not between Musa and the people of Egypt, nay, it was between truth and, and falsehood. It was between a prophet and a non-prophet. So obviously the help of Allah Ta'ala is with the Nabi and as the Quran says, وَلَا يُفْلِحُ السَّاحِرُ حَيْثُ أَتَى That a magician will never succeed. When Musa alayhi salatu was salam, Allah granted him victory and Allah granted him dominance and Allah granted him uh, control over the situation and the magicians fell in prostration and they accepted Islam on the spot which was a terrible blow to Pharaoh, to his pride, to his arrogance, to his haughtiness. This woman, Asiya alayhi salam, was really left impressed. And she said, Subhanallah, this is definitely a truth. And I see a different light and this is a true dimension. So she immediately comes to Musa alayhi salam and she expresses that she wants to accept Islam. No sooner does she express her desire for Islam, uh, Pharaoh becomes raged and he becomes totally angry. And he's, he commands his men to take a boulder. He takes a massive boulder and he says, drop it on her chest. فَإِنْ رَجَعَتْ عَنْ قَوْلِهَا فَهِيَ زَوْجَتِي if she retreats and she uh, declines, 
uh, and she forsakes this Islam, then I will once again accept her as my wife. But if she chooses to, to accept this faith, then I'm afraid this is the end and, and she will meet a nasty fate. But this is Iman, she was convinced on the beauty of Islam. So Pharaoh's men come with this boulder. And this woman, she was convinced on the beauty of Islam, as it comes in the Rewaite of Bukhari, that when Iman enters the recesses of the heart, then there is nothing but nothing that can deny one from the sweetness and the beauty of Islam. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, The problem with man today is that he is looking for instant gain. You know, my sisters, our condition is like a child. You promise a child at the end of the month, I will take you to a shop and I will buy you an exclusive toy valued at a thousand rand, if not more. But a child wants something instant and immediate. So a person passing by with a little rattle or over a simple balloon intrigues that child and attracts that child. The child negotiates with the parent and says, I want this here. The parent says, but I promise you at the end of the month, I will take you, I will spend on you. No, no, I want this. I want this. Why? It's instant. It's immediate. Allah says, that is your problem. I have prepared so much for you in Akhirah, but you're looking for instant results. You're looking for things that are immediate. And then Allah speaks about what is to come. What is to come in that credit? That credit Allah has that day when those faces will be bright and radiant. Allah make us amongst them who will be privileged with the countenance of Allah. What does the poet say? يوم القيامة on the day of قيامة نراه كما نرى قمرا بدأ للست بعد ثماني that we will be privileged with the countenance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which indeed will be the climax of joy which will be the climax of joy Sayyidina Musa asked Allah permission that Allah can I see you in this world and Allah said لن تراني you don't have the ability your vision doesn't have the capacity ولكن انظر إلى الجبل فإن استقر مكانه فسوف تراني but I will cast my countenance on the mountain. And if the mountain can bear it soon, you will see me. فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّى رَبُّهُ لِلْجَبَلِ When your Lord cast his countenance on the mountain, it was shattered to pieces. And you see the riwayat of Tirmidhi, what a minimum fraction. Nonetheless, this woman convinced that this was the beauty. She made a dua to Allah. And Allah mentioned that dua in the Quran. And that is what I discussed with you, my sister. وَضَّرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا امْرَأَةَ فِرْعَوْنَ إِذْ قَالَتْ رَبِّ بِنِ لِي عِنْدَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ And indeed Allah reminds the believers of the wife of Pharaoh. What is the reminder of Allah? إِذْ قَالَتْ رَبِّ بِنِ لِي عِنْدَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ She addressed Allah by saying, Oh Allah, I'm giving up a royal life. Allah, I'm giving up a palace. Allah, I'm giving up comforts and luxuries. Allah, me accepting Islam is not a simple thing. There is a price behind this year. I ask you in lieu of this, you designate for me a palace in Jannah next to you. وَنَجِّنِي مِنْ فِرَعَوْنَ وَعَمَلِهِ وَنَجِّنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ And save me from the tyranny of my evil husband and likewise from the oppressing people. And she says this, her gaze turns towards the heavens according to the right of Ibn Kathir. She recites her iman and she takes her last breath. There are a lot of lessons that we can deduce from here. The simple lesson that I want to leave you with respectively from every woman, from the life of the wife of Fir'aun is, that my sister, let not your wealth, let not your position ever allow you to compromise on the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you typically was a woman who enjoyed every comfort, every privilege, an intelligent woman, a well-admired woman, a well-envied woman, a woman that every other woman would desire being like her, but no sooner did she see the truth. Allah speaks about another incident in the Quran. Subhanallah, these are now the beloveds of Allah. These are just not the servants of Allah, but the beloved female servants of Allah. Who is this woman? Allah speaks about Bilqis. Reference is made to her in the tafsir as Bilqis. She was the queen of Saba. She was the queen of Saba. The nation of Saba enjoyed very good health, comfort, luxuries. The Quran says, Baldatun tayyibatun wa rabbun ghafur. It was a forgiving Allah and a prosperous city. You know, everything was found for them. Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam was living in that very same era. He was informed through the medium of a bird by the name of Hudhud that there is this woman Utiyat min kulli shay who is favored with everything walaha arshun azim and has a magnificent throne and she is prostrating to the sun. So she is a great woman, she is a queen, she has control, she has dominance, she has beauty, she has everything of every nature. The only thing is she is disobeying Allah. Sulaiman alayhi salatu was a Nabi of Allah so he addresses her and he writes a letter to her. What does he say in the letter? In essence, إِنَّهُ مِن سُلَيْمَانَ وَإِنَّهُ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ أَلَّا تَعْلُوا عَلَيَّ وَأَتُونِي مُسْلِمِينَ 
Indeed, this letter is from Sulaiman in the name of Allah, the most kind, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Allah ta'alu alayya, my humble appeal to you is, Queen, do not rebel against me, don't show me your authority, wa atuni muslimin, bring your kingdom, bring your men and your ministers and accept Islam. But this was a very, very intelligent woman. This woman, the Quran testifies. She was a woman of, of great vision, a, gr- a woman of great intellect. Uh, she had great ruling skills, she had great authority. When she received this letter, she called up an immediate meeting with all her ministers. And she said that I have been given a letter, a very dignified letter. And in this letter is very short, very brief, very concise, to the point, yet there is a subtle threat. So I don't know what's the way forward. Do we engage this man? Do I take him head on? Or do I surrender to him and accept his faith? So the people around him, her ministers, around her, her ministers said to her, قَالَتْ إِنَّ الْمُلُوكَ قَالُوا نَحْنُ أُلُوا قُوَّةٍ وَأُلُوا بَأْسٍ شَدِيدٍ وَالْأَمْرُ إِلَيْكِ فَانْظُرِي مَاذَا تَأْمُرِينَ They said that we are people of strength and might. If you want to engage him, we are ready to fight with you. But end of the day, the call is yours, O Queen. So she responded by saying, it is the practice of kings and rulers and monarchs. When they invade a land, they cause havoc. And they disgrace and humiliate the people of that place. And I'm afraid perhaps this might be the motive of this man. So what I am going to do is now I'm going to assess him. Does he sincerely invite me towards Islam or is he out for my wealth and my beauty? But obviously she knew not this was a prophet of Allah. And just not Prophet Sulaiman who, who was known for the wealth and the kingdom Allah had given him, for the empire that Allah had given him. So she sent handsome gifts towards him. She sent slaves, bricks of gold, silver, horses, camels, to see if this man gets impressed with my wealth. And the Quran describes it, all these beautiful gifts when they came in the presence of Sulaiman, uh, sent by this queen towards Sulaiman This was not any ordinary man. If it was another man, Allah forbid, if it was me or anyone else, we would have fallen for that wealth, we would have fallen for the beauty of that woman, but this was a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Quran says it very eloquently. When the wealth came, Sulaiman looked at this and he said, are you trying to impress me with your wealth? Tell your queen she can thrill herself and deceive herself. Listen, tell her for the last. Irji' ilayhim. Falanatiyannahum bijunoodil la qibala lahum biha. I'm not here to play and I'm not here to mock. I'm here to do serious things. She must come quickly and accept Islam or else I will face her with the might of my nation and the might of the strength that Allah has given me. And she and the world put together weren't able to take me on. When she received this message, she realized this is the true prophet of Allah. Look at this woman again. She said, I'm ready to surrender to this man. I'm ready to forsake my kingdom. And I will decline as being the queen. And from today, I will give up my royal life. She takes all her ministers. This is the position of one woman in affluence. This is the position of one woman in authority. She takes all her men, all her ministers and everything and she comes. When she leaves from, from Yemen, from Sabah and she comes towards Sulaiman alayhi salam, Allah, Allah had given Sulaiman strength. So he orders one of his jinnat to lift her entire throne and bring it. The entire throne of this woman is brought. Subhanallah. When the throne is brought prior to her arrival, then he rearranges the throne. He adjusts the setup of the throne. Uh, so first she tried to assess the intellect of Sulaiman. Now Sulaiman is assessing her intelligence. Sulaiman salam rearranges the throne. Never it is in her wildest dreams or ideas that my throne could be physically lifted and transferred to another location. As she comes before Sulaiman alayhi salam, Sulaiman alayhi salam asks her, Aha kada arshuk, aha kada arshuk. Does your throne resemble this throne? Is your throne similar to this throne? She looks at it very carefully. She ponders, she contemplates. She says, Qalat ka'annahu hu. I think this is my throne. This is my throne. And then she says, Oh Sulaiman, listen, hands up. I've got nothing to argue with you. وَأُوتِينَ الْعِلْمَ مِنْ قَبْلِهَا وَكُنَّا مُسْلِمِينَ I am convinced that you are the Prophet of Allah and I am convinced Islam is the true religion and I have come with all my men and my ministers. And then she enters into the palace of Sulaiman alayhi salam and obviously Allah had given him wealth, such wealth that he had a pond there and beneath this pond there was fish and the glass was to- totally transparent. So she walks on it assuming it to be water. كَشَفَتْ عَنْ سَاقِيهَا The Quran says she lifts her garb and her robe uh, thinking that there is water and perhaps she will wet her feet. So she is then told, uh, 
that this has been covered by glass. She then falls into sajda. She falls into sajda and she says, قالت إني ظلمت نفسي وأسلمت مع سليمان لله رب العالمين. Oh my Lord, indeed I, I, I have oppressed myself and I live the life oblivious of you. But today I give up my kingdom and I accept iman on the on on, on the teachings of Sulaiman alayhi salam. The scholars of tafsir have then de de debated. Some suggest that she got married to Sulaiman alayhi salam. The point that I want to deduce from these two these two women, one is the wife of Fir'aun, that is Asiya alayhi salam. And let me remind you, according to one riwayat, when Khadija radiallahu was in the throes of death, the Prophet وسلم, said, Oh Khadija, when you get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then convey my regards to your co-wife. So she frowned and she said, Oh Prophet of Allah, am I not your first wife? So the Prophet وسلم, said, Yes, you are my first wife in this world, but Allah has promised to make my nikah with Asya, the wife of Fir'aun in Jannah. And so has Allah promised to make my, wife, my nikah with Maryam alayhi salatu was salam. So these were two women who enjoyed affluence, who enjoyed position, yet those positions did not deny them coming close to Allah. So that is the message I leave to you from them. They were indeed the beloveds of Allah, they were indeed the close servants of Allah. And the message we learn, let not our position, let not our degree make us compromise our position with Allah. Then we move on to the next woman and that is Maryam alayhi salatu was salam. Who was Maryam alayhi salatu was salam? Subhanallah. She is as all the divine scriptures speak about her, the Virgin Mary. Allah devotes a chapter in the Quran exclusively to Maryam alayhi salam, Surah Maryam. So once in America, I had to address a large audience of non-Muslims, males and females. And I spoke about the role of Jesus in the Quran. And I spoke about Mary from the light of Quran. And they were astonished. They were marveled. They were perplexed. They were taken aback. They were spellbound to, to, to understand the, the, the recognition the Quran has given to Maryam alayhi salam. We learn from the verse of Surah Mu'minun. Allah Rabbul Izzat says, look at the provisions Allah made for this woman. What was outstanding in her life and the message from her life to you, my sister, is she was a very bashful woman. She was a very, very modest woman. Absolute modesty in every part of her life. At the time when she was giving birth to Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu was salam. Imagine she was alone. She had no partner, no friend, no neighbor. She had no food, no drinks. But she was that close to Allah that let me remind you that not even your husband can console you and comfort you in your labor room. Not even your gynecologist can comfort you. As much as Allah comforted Maryam in her labor room. Obviously it was not a labor room. What I mean is in similar context, using similar meta metaphor or terminologies. But when she was experiencing childbirth, the support that Allah gave her, the solace that Allah gave her, the comfort that Allah gave her. Allah sent Jibreel and Allah caused water to gush. Allah caused water, a fresh spring of water. Divine arrangements Allah made for the Virgin Mary at the time when she was given birth. And what did Allah Ta'ala say? Allah takhafi wa la tahzani qad ja'ala rabbuki tahtaki sariya wa huzzi ilayki bijidhu'in nakhla tusaqit alayki rutaban janiya Today they talk of postnatal depression and depression when giving birth etc. You see the divine intervention that Allah made for this woman. Allah caused the water to gush. Allah said, Maryam, gently take your hand to the branch above you. Shake the branch gently. And I will cause fresh dates to fall. Rutaban janiya. Fakuli, eat, oh my Maryam. Washrabi, drink, oh my Maryam. Waqarri aina, and look at Isa and comfort your eye, oh my Maryam. Fa'imma tarayinna min al-bashari ahada. Fakuli, inni nadartu lirrahmani sawma. And if anybody accuses you, where did you bring this child from, Maryam? You remain silent. I will intervene and I will intercede. When Sayyidina Isa was born and he grew up, there was a king that was out to kill Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. And likewise, he wanted to kill the mother of Isa alayhi salatu was salam. Again, look at the divine arrangements Allah made for this woman. What did Allah say? Allah makes mention of it in the 18th juz of the Quran. وَجَعَلْنَا بْنَ مَرْيَمَ وَأُمَّهُ آيَةً وَآوَيْنَاهُمَا إِلَىٰ رَبَوَةٍ ذَاتِ قَرَارٍ وَمَعِينٍ And we made Maryam and her son Isa both a sign of our greatness and a reflection of our grandeur. وَآوَيْنَاهُمَا إِلَىٰ رَبْوَ And we gave them shelter on the zenith of a mountain, away from the knowledge and the vision of this king. وَآوَيْنَاهُمَا إِلَىٰ رَبْوَةٍ ذَاتِ قَرَارِ وَمَعِينٍ Then Allah said, I gave her the best location, a place that was suitable, a place that was qarar, which was conducive, which was livable, ma'een, where there was beautiful springs around her. So one is you want to take your husband and you want to go for an outing and you want to go for a scenic view. But Allah made divine arrangements for this woman. What is my message from the life of Maryam to you, my sister? Wherever Allah speaks about her in the Quran, Allah speaks of her modesty. So what does Allah say? 
ومريم ابنة عمران التي أحصنت فرجها and Maryam the daughter of Imran التي that woman أحصنت فرجها who safeguarded her chastity, her morality, her integrity very very bashful woman Allah reminds us of the daughters of Shu'ib alayhi salatu wasalam in the Quran when they came to call Sayyidina Musa what a unique quality we look at the Quran whenever Allah speaks of a crime Allah first speaks about the male perpetrator then the female perpetrator by way of example Allah says وَالسَّارِقُ وَالسَّارِقَةُ فَقْطَعُوا أَيْدِيَهُمَا the male thug and the female thug the male thief and the female thief but when it comes to the act of adultery and fornication then Allah reverses the sequence so what does Allah say? أَزَّانِيَةُ وَالزَّانِي فَجْلِدُوا كُلَّ وَاحِدٍ مِّنْهُمَا مِئَةَ جَلْدَ Allah says the adulteress then the adulterer the scholars may Allah reward them they critically analyze even the sequence of the Quran nay they analyze the grammar of the Quran why has Allah mentioned the crime of adultery by by first mentioning the adulteress indeed the crime of adultery and fornication is a horrendous crime it's a heinous crime it's a severe crime however if a woman commits it it is more severe simply because she has been veiled with layers of modesty she has been covered with layers of bashfulness for her to commit an act of immorality for her to dress in a way that is unbecoming and unethical and to display her beauty to strange men this is more a serious crime we refer to women as masturat, meaning those that have been covered and concealed. When Allah has addressed you in the Quran saying, وَلَا يَضْرِبْنَ بِأَرْجُلِهِنَّ لِيُعْلَمَ مَا يُخْفِينَ مِنْ زِينَتِهِنْ وَلَا يَضْرِبْنَ بِأَرْجُلِهِنَّ لِيُعْلَمَ مَا يُخْفِينَ مِنْ زِينَتِهِنْ وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And tell the woman not to strike their feet. So to reveal the jewelry or the anklets that are on their feet, least it attracts and leaves a seductive message for a strange man. My sister, when Allah tells you not to reveal the jewelry on your feet, not to expose the beauty of the lower part of your body, then can you imagine how much more cautious and precautions you should tread when it comes to any other part of your body? If Allah can forewarn the honorable wives of the Prophet ﷺ, فَلَا تَخْضَعْنَ بِالْقَوْلِ فَيَتْمَعَ الَّذِي فِي قَلْبِهِ مَرَضٌ وَقُلْنَا قَوْلًا مَعْرُوفًا Or the consorts of Muhammad ﷺ, do not speak in a sweet voice, do not speak in a sweet tone. So, as I mentioned again, we want to become the beloveds of Allah. We spoke about Maryam alayhi salam, we spoke about Asya and we spoke about Bilqis and we spoke about a common message from their life. We spoke about Maryam alayhi salam and Allah's divine provisions for her. And Allah will make that provision for you. The message from Maryam alayhi salam is modesty. I was speaking about the daughters of Shu'ib alayhi salatu was salam. When she comes to communicate with, with, with uh, Sayyidina Musa. Of course in life at times we have to speak to strangers. We have to speak. But we got to restrict ourselves within the parameters of Sharia. What a beautiful explanation Allah gives in the Quran. And I always latch on to this verse and I develop there onwards. Allah says if a person is in the throes of death, if a person is in the throes of death, and there's nothing available besides pork and besides wine, then it is permissible for him at that time to save his life. But look at the beauty of the Quran. Allah Ta'ala says, فَمَنِ اضْطُرَّ فَمَنِ اضْطُرَّ غَيْرَ بَاغٍ وَلَا عَادٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ فَمَنِ اضْطُرَّ فِي مَخْمَصَةٍ فَمَنِ اضْطُرَّ فِي مَخْمَصَةٍ غَيْرَ مُتَجَانِفٍ لِإِثْمٍ Allah says that if you have to consume that wine and you have to consume that pork because there's nothing available and if you will not eat then death is imminent then it is correct for you to drink that wine and it is correct for you to eat that pork but Allah attaches two conditions Allah says you should not eat it relishly and you should not eat beyond necessity. So you do not drink with pleasure, you don't drink that wine with pleasure and you not, do not drink to satisfy or comfort your thirst, but you drink to the bare necessity of survival. In the same way, my sister, if you have to speak with a stranger and rightfully so, you will have to. It's a life in which we are living. We are living, we have to socialize, we have to meet. But these are the two conditions. If we will restrict ourselves to these conditions, that I will not take pleasure from speaking to you, nor will you take pleasure from speaking to any strange man. Nor will I nor you speak beyond necessity. Then Allah says, فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ Then there is no sin upon such a person. So that is the message we get from Sayyidina Maryam alayhi salatu was salam. We move on to the next woman, Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha. What is my message to you from the life of Khadija radiyallahu anha? I have a lot to tell you from her life. My time doesn't allow me, but I hope I can make myself brief. The first wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. A woman of absolute wealth. You are now talking of a career woman. 
And I chose these women so that every one of us can relate to it. Uh, you might have, a, you know, a woman that is well oriented, business oriented, fairly affluent, who's got a marketing uh, mind, who's got a business oriented mind. You are talking of Khadija radiallahu anha, wealthy, beauty, exceptionally impressive. There was, you know, hosts of men that wanted her. Who, which men wouldn't want a wealthy woman? Which men wouldn't want a wealthy woman, a beautiful woman, a dignified woman, a woman with high morals? So that is Khadija radiallahu anha. Uh, she was a very great businesswoman. She was a very great businesswoman. In fact, she met the Prophet sallallahu through business. The Prophet sallallahu at the age of 25 went on a business venture and who sent her was Khadija radiallahu anha. But subhanallah, when she was captured by the beauty of the Prophet sallallahu uh, and obviously this was her good favor that Allah had ordained this in her favor. Look at her. She supported him. My message from the life of Khadija to you is the faithfulness to your partner, the loyalty to your, to your spouse. The Prophet wasallam sums up the virtue of Khadija in one hadith of Kanzul Ummal. He says, آمنت بي إذ كفرني الناس وصدقتني إذ كذبني الناس وواستني بمالها إذ حرمني الناس Khadija is that woman who trusted me when people doubted me, who supported me when people deserted me, and who had faith in me when people belied me. And because of that, I will never forget the favors of Khadija. She was a very, very faithful woman. She spent her health and her wealth on the Prophet ﷺ. She financially supported him. The Prophet ﷺ said, Wa satni bi maliha id haramani an nas. So my humble message to you from the life of Khadija is my sister, that be a faithful wife to your husband. Obviously, if I was addressing men, I would have been telling them to display such character that they can win the confidence of their wife. And that indeed was the life of the Prophet ﷺ. But since I am dis I'm speaking to you, my sister, hence I focus my topic to you. When the Prophet ﷺ received revelation and he came home, who was it that comforted him? Was it not Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha? Was it not Khadija radiallahu anha? Indeed, it was Khadija. Kalla la yukhzik Allahu abada. O Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah will never forsake you. Allah will never abandon you. Inna ka latasilu rahim You are kind, you join ties, you help the needy, you help the destitute. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's first interaction with revelation. So he comes home and he leans on the support of Khadija. I ask you, my sister, when your husband comes home tired and exhausted. I ask you, my sister, when your husband comes home perhaps moody, perhaps vulnerable, perhaps slightly edgy. I ask you, embrace him with a warm shoulder. Embrace him with a bright smile. Embrace him with open arms. Perhaps he might be uh, insensitive at that time. Just tolerate it. And remember what Khadija did for the Prophet ﷺ. And I swear by Allah, you will become the beloved of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ said, That woman with whom her husband is pleased, min ayyi jannati sha'at. Some will enter from one door. Some will enter from, bab, from, from, from a door exclusive for those that fast. But the woman who enjoys the, the, the pleasure of her husband, for you the eight doors of Jannah will be opened up. So the message to you from the life of Khadija radiallahu anha, she supported the cause of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa She then took the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to her cousin Waraka ibn Nawfal. She didn't leave the matter. She gave him all the support, all the courage, all the loyalty. She said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I need to do that which brings comfort to you. Waraka ibn Nawfal, who, who was familiar with the divine scriptures, when he seen the Prophet ﷺ, he congratulated Khadija and he said, this is, the, this is the human that the world anticipates. The final Prophet has come. And he expressed his submission and he expressed his iman on the Prophet ﷺ. So the Prophet ﷺ had a lot of time. In fact, Aisha radiallahu anha, who had not seen Khadija but heard much about her, he, she at times used to take offense from the Prophet ﷺ praising Khadija. And she also said, O oh, Nabi of Allah, is it not over? And can't we close the chapter of your first wife? Let's wrap it up and embrace a new era. And the Prophet Sallallahu would silence her by saying, Kanat wa kanat, my Khadija was literally out of the world. She was something else. I will never forgive her. So that is the third woman I leave you with. Khadija radiallahu anha. And my message to you, my sister, is faithfulness to your partners. And again, she was a very faithful woman to her children. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Khadija gave birth to all my children. She was very, very devoted to her children. It was on her request that Zainab radiallahu anha was even married to Abu al-As ibn al-Rabi. She came with the proposal to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa She said, our daughter Zainab is of marriageable age and my sister has a son by the name of Abu al-As. Would you accept this year? وَكَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَا يُخَالِفُهَا 
The Prophet of Allah would accept whatever Khadija would say, happily consult with her and take it from there. She made, she made arrangements for, for, the, for, the, for the marriage of Zainab radiallahu anha. We move on then to the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Fatima radiallahu anha. Subhanallah, what a woman, my sisters. By virtue of Khadija, I'm speaking to that young mother. She passed away when my Nabi was, uh, when she was in her, in her 20s. She lived only six months after the life of the Prophet ﷺ, simply because the scholars say she was really uh, affected by his, uh, by his death. Uh, she was there in the throes of death and she said, Wa karbata, wa karbata. Oh my father, what a pain you are suffering. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, Laysa ala abiki karbun ba'd al Oh my Fatima, take solace. This is the last pain your father has seen. Once his eyes closes, it is Rafiq al-A'la that highest abode in Jannat and there's never pain again. And then she said, Subbat alayya masaibu, law annaha subbat ala al-ayyami sirna layaliya. That on the, on the death of my father, such a, a, a colossal task has fallen on me. Law annaha subbat ala al-ayyam. If, if the death has to come on the day, even the day will turn into night. Uh, she was, I, I want to speak about her in two minutes, as a faithful wife she was to her husband, uh, as, 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 a, as an obedient daughter she was to her father. Subhanallah, she was an embodiment of perfection from many angles. The riwayat of Abu Dawood, she would come and visit the Prophet ﷺ. He had so much time for her that when he would knock on the door, when she would knock on the door, she, he would say, Inna hadha ladaqqu Fatima. Inna hadha ladaqqu Fatima. This is the knock of my daughter Fatima. He would then stand up, kiss her hand, and then make her sit in his place. And whenever the Prophet ﷺ will go to Khadija radiallahu anha, the same will happen. I was reading one hadith today. The Prophet ﷺ had nothing at home. He then went to his other wives, he had nothing. Imagine, there was absolutely nothing in all his houses. He then comes to the house of his daughter Fatima radiallahu anha. She says, oh my father, I have absolutely nothing. The Prophet of Allah leaves. Just then Allah sends some food for her. Allah sends divinely some food for her. She was hungry, her children were hungry. But she sends a message, she says, go and give this to my father. Go and give this to my father. So the food was brought and presented to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And she accepted the hunger of herself and her two children. Now let me remind you, those two children were not ordinary children. Those were not any stars or any celebrities. Those were the two princes, the Quran says, the Hadith says, of the youth of Jannah, Sayyida Shababi Ahli Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ comes home, he says, Fatima, where is this food from? She says, Inna Allah yarzuqu man yasha'u bi ghayri hisab. That, oh my father, Allah makes divine provisions. Allah makes divine provisions. So the Prophet ﷺ says, May Allah be pleased with you, my daughter. You have revived the likes of Maryam. You have revived the likes of Maryam. That when she sat in the chamber, in the mihrab, كُلَّمَا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَّ الْمِحْرَابَ وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِزْقًا قَالَ يَا مَرْيَمُ أَنَّا لَكِ هَذَا قَالَتْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Just as Allah made divine provisions for you, Allah made it for her. Allah blessed her with the son Hassan. Allah blessed her with the son Hussein رضي الله عنهما. Allah blessed her with the third son, Muhsin رضي الله عنه, who passed away. And Allah also blessed her with the daughter Umm Kulthum رضي الله عنها, who in the years to come then became one of the wives of Sayyidina Umar رضي الله عنه. This woman, Wallahu Akbar, the Prophet ﷺ said, Kafa biki sharafan, Kafa biki sharafan, O oh my daughter, leave everything, this is enough for you, and takuni Sayyidat Nisa'i Ahli Jannah. My Allah has reminded me and, re- and, and congratulated me that you will be the queen of the woman of Jannah. So that is my message from the life of Fatima radiallahu anha. She was a young woman, she had children, and she was so devoted. And I ask you devotion to your children, my sister. Wallah, taking your children to the recreation place or just dropping off them at the school is not enough. She was the very woman who had developed ulcers on her hand. She was the very woman who had developed sores on her hand because of her domestic chores. Today we have comforts, we have luxuries, we have domestic servants. She was the very woman that asked the Prophet ﷺ for a servant. And he substituted it by the recitation of Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. What a devoted mother she was. That it was in a devotion to her children that this is what had come upon her health. And make no mistake, she was a young woman, she was a beautiful woman. She was not exempted of the common qualities of a young woman. She passed away when she was 29. I leave you with the last woman, and that is Aisha radiallahu anha. I can't explore her life and I can tell you much. But the point that I want to leave you from this beloved female servant of Allah is the knowledge that Allah had given her. Really my sister, engage yourself in the learning of the deen of Allah. Engage yourself. What is the riwayat? Mu'ad radiallahu anha. Abu Musa Ashari radiallahu anha says, مَا اشْتَكَلَ عَلَيْنَا أَصْحَابُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ حَدِيثٍ قَدْتُ إِلَّا سَأَلْنَا عَيْشَةَ رضي الله عنها Every time we face the difficulty in the explanation or the commentary of a hadith, we that is the eminent sahaba who sat with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, we would refer, refer our grievances to Aisha, and in no time Aisha رضي الله عنها would answer it. 
Understand again, when I speak of Aisha, I'm speaking to the young girl in this gathering. I'm speaking to the teenager that is growing up. Because at the death of the Prophet ﷺ, she was 18. So whatever knowledge she acquired was in the tender age of 18. She was widowed at the age of 18. And she memorized and conveyed 2,210 ahadith. So be you the, 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 the wife of, of any king, like the wife of Fir'aun, or be it a career woman or any business oriented woman like Khadija, or a woman from a noble lineage like Maryam alayha salatu was salam, or a woman like Fatima radiallahu anha. Wallah, this is the opportunity and this is the woman and this is to whom you've got to look. Allah had given her so much knowledge that Imam Zuhri rahmatullah alayhi said, and I leave you with this, لو جمع علم الناس وعلم أزواج النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم if the knowledge of all the companions are gathered, and the knowledge of the wives of the Prophet ﷺ are gathered, and then you critically analyze the knowledge Allah had given Aisha, this young girl at the age of 18 had much more knowledge. She was so profound in her knowledge. Subhanallah, the Prophet ﷺ addressed his Sahaba. They would come sit in his company. He would tell them then, now return home. وَمُرُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ وَعَلِّمُوا أَهْلَكُمْ Command your children and teach your wives. Advise them and, and have mutual mutual encouragement towards towards the Deen of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The Sahabiyat were in the in the in the journey of Hajj with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then Asma bint Umayyis radiyallahu anha experiences childbirth during the cause of Hijr, during the cause of Hajj, and then she asked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So really, my message to you from the life of Aisha radiyallahu anha that you also make your house a house of Aisha in the sense make it a house of knowledge. Engage with your children in the learning and the teaching of Deen. Engage in constructive recitation of the Quran. Read the episodes of the pious people. لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةٌ لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Read about what Allah spoke about Aisha in the Quran. And we have been taught, عَلِّمُوا نِسَاءَكُمْ سُورَةً نُور Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu used to say, make it a point to teach your wife Surah Nur. Make it a point to teach your mothers and your daughters Surah Nur. Why all the relevant laws pertaining to veil, pertaining to women, pertaining to, uh, you know, related, woman-related masail have been discussed in this chapter. How sad, we don't even know where it is discussed, never mind learning it. So we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He give every sister here the ability, nay, every brother that has gathered this side as well, that we imbibe within us these qualities. And sincerely we honor and revere and respect these personalities because these were the beloved servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is that that be our goal and our aim that we become the beloved servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ مَا يَعْبَأُ بِكُمْ رَبِّي لَوْ لَا تُعَاؤُكُمْ فَقَدْ كَذَّبْتُمْ فَسَوْفَ يَكُونُ لِزَامًا Say unto them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, My Lord has no regard for you if you do not worship him. Hence supplicate him and you will become his beloved servants. So Allah speaks about it in the 22nd Jews of the Quran, the obedient male and the obedient female. مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ Those who live a righteous life, be it the male or the, be, or the female. Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq and the ability to inculcate these qualities in our lives. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst the pious and the beloved servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار. O oh Allah, you reward our sisters that have gathered here. O oh Allah, you make every woman here an embodiment of all these beautiful qualities. Allah, you make all our sisters the beloveds of Allah, and you make us all your beloved, O oh Allah. Allah, give us the ability to, to abstain from those qualities which take us away from you. And give us the ability to inculcate those qualities that bring us close to you. Allah, make them good mothers to their children, make them good wives to their partners, Allah. Make them good daughters to their husbands, make them good, good, good followers of, of, the, of the Prophet wasallam, and make them an asset to our society. Allahumma رزقهن الحياء والعفاف والإيمان اللهم اهدي الشباب المسلمين اهدي نساء المسلمين اللهم رزقهن الحياء والعفاف والإيمان ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم اجعل اجتماعنا هذا اجتماعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا منا ولا معنا شقيا ولا محروما وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين